okay so <clears throat> today we are going to learn about functions and methods right so functions are really important it's one of the most fundamental constructs in python right which can help uh, your life make a lot easier right so let's say you want to do some set of tasks and uh, you can write a function for that and it will be a generic uh, boilerplate code in which you can pass your input whatever you want to and according to whatever functionality functionalities you have defined within a function that can act uh, take that input and uh, does some set of transformation and spits out the uh, corresponding output right so let's see what functions are and then we'll have a look at various examples of uh, different sort of functions and then uh, we'll also uh, talk about a bit on methods so how methods are different from functions so i think you already have a bit of idea as in what differentiates a function to a method right so but we'll expand on that idea and tomorrow uh, we'll have this class on classes uh, methods attributes etc so there you'll get a very holistic idea of what methods actually are right so how can we create methods that act on a particular objects and uh, yeah so those things will be learning tomorrow so but today let's talk about uh, functions uh, let's delve into them a bit uh, deeper see how we can write functions so those sort of things will be discussed today okay uh, just hang on okay so functions will be one of our main building blocks when we construct larger and larger amounts of code to solve problems right so uh, there you will find a lot of uh, uh, requirement when you are solving a particular problem that you need to have some generic piece of code which you can call at any point of time and that will help you do your job right so their functions will become really important and in fact so formally a function is a useful device that groups together a set of statements so they can be run more than once right so essentially you uh, every time you want to perform some functionality or perform some action on a given input you don't want to write that piece of code over and over again right so you can code that piece of code uh, uh, within a function and then call that function as many times you want right so you don't have to write those uh, set of codes over and over again so this is why functions are really useful so they help uh, us group together a set of statements so that they can be run more than once okay so they can also let us specify parameters that can serve as inputs to the functions right so uh functions in especially in python we can provide inputs to the function they take that uh, they perform some, some set of operations on those inputs and uh, spit out a particular output right so some functions might not even print some output right so uh, depending upon what use cases these functions are solving or what kind of uh, circumstances or problems they are meant to solve right so that depends upon but function is in a way a very generic uh, term uh, especially in terms of python programming so functions are those set of devices um, which help us replicate uh, the actions performed by a, spe a specific set of codes right so they will make our life a lot easier so on a fundamental level uh, functions allows us to uh, not uh, have to repeatedly write the same code again and again right so that's the same thing so suppose you want to execute particular uh, code for different input so you don't have to write those uh, every time right so you can encode those uh, things in your functions and that will do the same task right so you remember uh, we have encountered some set of inbuilt functions in python for example length right so type is also another uh, function then print is there but of course uh, <clears throat> uh, we'll try to write our own functions and see how we can uh, do some specific set of tasks okay so uh, in this, uh, when we talked about strings or lists so we use this function length to get the length of a string or maybe a length of a list too right so because uh, we want to check the length of a sequence so it's a relatively common task so we want to have a function uh, instead of uh, writing a piece of code which uh, calculates the number of elements and then returns it right so we can do that using uh, other techniques but uh, functions are really useful when we want to do a repetitive set of actions okay so functions will be one of the most basic levels of reusing code in python right so they provide us with uh, this capability of code reusability right so once we have written this piece of code 
we can use them as and when we want right so they will be one of the most uh, fundamental level of uh, code reusability in python right so let's see how we can write a function okay and what's the overall com components of a function in python and uh, how do we uh, write them essentially right so what are the things we need to follow so a function has the following form right so we a function starts with a keyword which is called def so this def is short for define or definition right so uh, this is the keyword uh, which will start whenever we want to write a function okay then uh, we'll add a space of course and then we write the name of a function right so let's say you want to do some task so you can you should definitely write a relevant function name right so uh, that will uh, make your life a lot easy right and then we have arg1 arg2 so these uh, this is short for argument right so argument is nothing but an input uh, to the function right so a, a function can have uh, no arguments but some functions can have one argument some functions can have two arguments some functions can have more than two arguments right so it depends upon uh, function to function and their specific use cases but uh, yeah just hang on for a second okay sorry about that okay so so you start writing a function with this keyword dev then you write the name of your function so this is upon your discretion what uh, function name you want to give and then uh, within the parenthesis it will have uh, the bunch of uh, inputs that function is supposed to take okay and you'll need to decide uh, this uh, by doing some thinking you need to come up with a logical reason that yeah this is the input i want to pass to this function uh, right so you'll only pass an input to a function or an argument when that is necessary right so you'll need to handle some cases so that's why you might have some additional arguments for those cases but of course uh, the number of inputs can vary it can be zero it can be one it can be two right uh, then we have something called what we uh, say in uh, python lingo a doc string okay so i'll come back to this later but essentially this means that uh, whatever we have enclosed within the uh, triple quotes right so this essentially defines what this function is supposed to do okay so uh, this is a very good practice so whenever you are writing a piece of code always use the doc string so this will essentially define what this function is meant for okay so uh, when you call this function later on and hover on the function name so it will automatically uh, tell you yeah so this is uh, it it takes the doc string and displays the same thing there okay so we'll see examples of that so but the doc string is meant to just uh, serve as what that function is supposed to do so you need to yeah mention this and this is in fact a really good uh, practice and then of course you need to within the def so as you can see we have some indentation so everything will be within a proper indentation so we cannot write something like return or uh, this doc string out uh, with the same indentation as def okay so we have some uh, indentation here which you need to follow right and then uh, within this function you write whatever you want to do uh, on those specific set of inputs uh, do some operations and then uh, we have a important keyword which is called return so this return keyword will re return whatever you want to return right so essentially what the function is meant to be right so assume that this function is essentially a box okay so you provide some inputs to it okay so you provide some input to this okay and then this spits out an output okay so this is the output we would want to return in this case right but in some uh, functions you don't even want an output you want to let's say print something right so that can be written within the function so it will not generate an output but it will just print okay so when i'm saying output that means you're using the return statement okay so all the things will become clear but this is the just the overall structure of how a fun uh, function in python looks like okay so function is nothing but uh, a box sort of thing if you can imagine right so it's just a box uh, it does some set of transformations here on the specific set of input and then it returns an output okay so this is uh, an overall uh, overview of what a function is 
but all the things will become clear okay so let's just look at what we have seen here right so we begin with def that is the keyword uh, whenever you want to define a function right so always whenever you are writing a function you need to start with a def keyword right so this is really important and then of course a space followed by name of the function right so this is the name of the function try to keep names relevant as i have emphasized earlier because this tells you a proper name a relevant name tells you what this function does right so it, it's very handy from a code re readability perspective right of course you can write some uh, func1 func2 something like this that will again of course be a valid function name but it might not be that relevant right so there is a difference between a valid thing and a relevant thing so you always need to keep these things in mind whenever you are writing a function okay so always try to write very relevant function names so for example len is a good name for a length function right so in, uh, we have already encountered this function earlier so len is a very good name right which is just a short for length okay and it get, uh, we we get the idea yeah so this function is meant to uh, get the length of a sequence right so it could be a string or it could be a list etc also be very careful with names you wouldn't want to call a function the same name as a built in function in python right so you can find the set of built in function in python so we'll want to avoid uh, writing uh, custom function names uh, as same as those built in functions right so this is going to create some conflict right so you wouldn't want to write a function whose uh, whose name is len right because that is already a built in function in python okay next point is uh, next comma comes a pair of parentheses right so this is the parentheses right so after and that comes after the function name with a number of arguments separated by comma right so this is really important so in this uh, within the parentheses you can provide your arguments or what we also call is inputs and they will be separated by comma right so these arguments are the input for your function and you will be able to use these inputs inside your function and reference them right and of course you need to add a colon here right so just have a look at this particular piece of uh, sample uh, function statement right so you start with a def keyword you write the name of the function and then within the parenthesis you have the arguments or the inputs separated by comma and then you provide the colon here right so when you provide colon it automatically takes you to the appropriate indentation right so here as you can see the cursor is blinking here okay so now next uh, thing is you must indent to begin the code inside your function correctly right so i have emphasized the importance of indentation and because python is uh, provides automated indentation so you can figure out what's happening right so python makes use of white space to organize code a lot of uh, programming languages do not support uh, this functionality but python does and that's why uh, python is such a, a brilliant language to work with right so you need to keep in mind the proper indentation right so as you can see here so maybe i can yeah uh, i can have this and show you if you if if the indentation is visible to you right so we have some white spaces here and it is aligned with the uh, with this particular indentation right so you wouldn't want to have uh, the indentation along the def right so you want to have some space and then along after that right one uh, useful shortcut what you if you want to use regarding the indentation so let's say i want to indent this piece of code with the def right so i can press shift tab okay so if you press shift tab it automatically indents and uh, let's say if you want to put a proper indentation you can press tab right so as you can see this works right so shift tab if you want to uh move a selected piece of code to the left then you press uh, press shift tab but if you want to let's move a piece of code to the right with a with a tab then you just uh, select that piece of code and press tab right so this is how it works okay next thing is you uh, you have seen the doc string right so this is where you write a basic description of the function right so uh i've already told you right so we can use shift tab here and doc strings are not necessary for simple functions but it's a very good practice to put them so that uh, whenever someone is going through your code or even you are going through your own code so you can identify yeah what this particular function does right so if a particular function 
has hundred lines of code within it, right? So you, it will be difficult for you to figure out, uh, yeah, what that function does if you do not provide a proper doc string. Okay, of course your function name should be there. It should be a relevant function name, but even in that case, uh, you should provide the doc string, right? So how do you provide a doc string? So you uh, specify whatever that function is supposed to do within the triple quotes, right? So this will create a doc string. Uh, you'll be seeing examples of this and we'll, you'll be able to relate what I mean, okay? So as I've told you the, uh, to learn anything, you know, it is it's imperative that you go through examples and this is uh, what we have been trying uh, since the very first class. So I want to show you guys as many examples for things so that you can relate and how things are actually working, right? So if I just bombard with you, uh, you with uh, theory, right? So that is not sub that is now it's how it's supposed to work, right? So, and then you have noticed the return keyword. So return allows a function to return a result that can then be stored as a variable or used in whatever manner a user wants, right? So it's not necessary that every function will have a return statement, but uh, uh, most of the functions will have, right? So we'll be seeing examples of all these different type of functions that, uh, that we can encounter uh, and uh, we'll try to see how those work, okay? So def is a keyword which is already defined in Python and that tells you uh, uh, if you're writing a function, you always need to start with the def keyword. Okay, so this is really important because that's how Python is going to understand that this is not just another variable, but it's a function. Okay, so def keyword is really important. Okay, so let's go through some examples and things will become clear, right? So I'll try to expand and consolidate on the previous examples so that you are able to relate in a much better way, right? So you have already seen this particular string, right? So this is the Heisenberg quote, right? And this is the string uh, which we had from the last class, okay? So now what we can do, we can create a list of words which we have uh, done earlier and we can use the list comprehension to let's say extract a list of first letters from a sentence, right? So this is our task. What we want to do, we are given a sentence, okay? So a sentence will be given to you. And then what you need to do, you need to extract a list of first letters from that sentence. So what this list of first letters will be. So essentially every word uh, will be there in your sentence and you need to extract the first character of that word. Okay, and store them in list. So this is uh, what we've already seen. And using list comprehension, if you remember from the last class, so we had uh, written this particular list comprehension where we are, uh, the output expression was word zero. That means the first character for each word in our list of words, which we called as words by Walter, right? So let's go ahead and execute this, okay? Now, let's say if we want to write a function for the same task, so how can we do that, okay? So firstly, we'll start with a dev keyword. That is for sure because you're writing a function then I will write a proper uh, relevant uh, function name. So in this case, my function name is extract first letters, right? So I hope you'll all agree that, yeah, this seems like a relevant uh, function name. And then what is the input this function is going to take, right? So if you, if you look at the example or the problem, right? So our task is to extract a list of first letters from a sentence, right? So a sentence will be taken as an input by this function and then you'll need to output the list of first letters. Okay, so our will have only one input for this particular function that is a sentence. Okay, then next what we do we write the doc string. Okay, so within the triple quotes. So I've written this function takes a sentence as an input and returns the list of first letters of each word. Okay, so this is the definition of our function. And uh, it's a very good practice that you always include the doc string whenever you are writing a function, right? And of course, uh, needless to say that you also need to add a lot of comments. So uh, here the step one is what? So we'll take this input. This is what we'll call a sentence. Then we'll cr create a variable words in sentence in which what we'll do, we'll split this sentence 
uh, into a list of words, right? So uh, you are already familiar with the split method, which acts on a given string and outputs a list of uh, words depending upon what the separator we are providing, right? So here the separator is space, right? So all those words in our string, which are which is a sentence, if uh, all the words which are separated by space, they will be stored in this particular list, what we'll call as words in sentence, okay? Now, the next step is we want to write a list comprehension so that we can extract the first letter, right? So this is again the same thing, uh, which I've already described to you earlier, right? So in first letters, I'm writing this uh, list comprehension. So what it does, extracts the first letter for each word in our words in sentence, okay? And if you can just focus on one thing, so this was the input and this is the input we are mentioning here, right? So whatever the operations we are doing, so we do some operations on, let's say the in, whatever the input which we have provided, then do some additional operations on top of that. So in this case, we take the sentence, uh, create the list of words, and then from that list of words, we extract the first letter of each word and store that in a list, what we call as first letters, right? And then the last step uh, is pretty simple. So we'll return this list, okay? So we'll call the return keyword, and then we'll add some space here and then write the list of letters which we want to return, right? So this list is called first letters and you'll, we'll just return this. So let's see how this works. So I'll just run this function, okay? Now, you know that our, we have all earlier uh, stored the sentence in this variable Heisenberg code. So that will be our input to this particular sentence, right? So as you can see, so if I don't even use print, so what, how can I call a function? So now you have written a function and you want to call this function and provide a uh, specific input, right? So how we do that? So I'll go to another code cell and write the function name. So one important thing, okay? So we have already written this function. So if you can write extract, right? So Python already recognized this uh, because it is stored in the environment. So we'll just click on this. And if you can see, that our doc string appears here, right? So this function takes an input as an in, sentence as an input and returns the list of first letters of each word. Okay, so this is the importance of doc string. So if you hover on the function name, so it will show you what this function is supposed to do. So this is coming from the doc string which we have specified. Okay, so it's a good practice. So if you don't specify this, uh, so it will not appear. Okay, so maybe let's see if I just comment this out. Okay, and I try to run this function again. Okay, and then I, I'll write extract first letters. Okay, now as you can see here, it does not show me anything, right? So that is the purpose of doc string. So let's go ahead and uncomment this. You know the shortcut, so control forward slash. Okay, and now I can run this function again. And uh, we can see that, yeah, our doc strings appears now. So now I have. Uh, written the function name, but I now need to provide the input, right? So the input will be sentence. So in our case, we have that sentence stored in our variable, which we call as Heisenberg code, right? So Heisenberg code. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so this is supposed to return the list of first letters of each word, right? So as you can see, this is returning the list of first letters, right? So this is how you write a function and call this function, okay? so. What we can also do, so let's say, let's call this variable, so Heisenberg letters, and we can also store this output because your function is returning a particular result, right? It's returning a list only. So we can uh, store this output, which is uh, which I'll be getting when I call this function and store that in Heisenberg's letter, Heisenberg letters, okay? So let's see, uh, okay, so, this runs and we can now inspect our Heisenberg letters and see what it contains. So it's going to contain the same thing. Okay, so as you can see, it is the same thing. So you can simply call the function if you just want to check the output. And if you want to use this function output uh, and store that in a variable that you can do, right? Just as we did in this particular example, right? So I hope you understand the difference of simply calling us a, uh, a function or uh, storing a function call in a, another variable. Okay, so just wait a second. Okay, so let's say you 
first of all yeah can you guys please tell me if you understand the, this basic function right which is extract first letters and uh, how this works so can you please confirm if you are able to understand this and then we can go on uh, to understand a lot of intercases involved uh, with the functions <clears throat> okay so okay so mantha i am coming back to your question so guys if you have any question you can uh, put in q and a okay uh all right so okay so this is how this function is supposed to work right so you write this function it in this case it's re returning a, a list okay and then what we can do uh yeah so we can call this function by writing the function name and providing the specific input and so this is nothing but a list right so what this will yield whatever we have specified in the uh, uh here right in the uh, whatever we have specified against the return keyword okay so this is essentially what will be returned for this specific input right so how this function is working so it takes this input heisenberg quote right and this heisenberg quote is uh, getting split uh, into a list of words okay that is getting stored in a variable words in sentence okay there is one more thing that there is words in sentence uh, do you think it it's available outside so words in sentence let's see uh, i am not getting any option okay so this is not defined okay so this variable is not present in the python uh, environment but it's only available within this uh, within the scope of this function okay so this is a pretty important thing not even the first letters i think first letters is already available from here but you will not uh, see so whatever variables you are defining within a function so those will not be available outside of the function right so i hope you are able to make sense of this that right? this particular variable is only created when we are calling that function right so i hope you understand this particular bit uh, can you confirm if you can understand why words in sentence is not available here can you confirm yeah okay okay <clears throat> yeah so words in sentence is what we'll also call as local variable that is this variable is available within the scope of this function only right so there are other ways uh, where you can uh, make sure that whatever variable you are uh, uh, providing within the function they are also available outside it right so there are different ways you can do that but uh, we don't have to go in those in the cases for now because we are just in very uh, initial phases so you don't have to get confused the most the only important thing which you need to focus on that variables which you are creating within a function so those will not be available outside this function right so let's say if i change this to uh, sorry okay so let's say list because first letter is already available this is a variable which we have from earlier so let's call this list of letters and then we can uh, okay so let's write this function okay run okay i've run this code let's run this code too okay now as you can see words in sentence is not available here not the list of letters will be available here right because this variable so as you can see name error so name list of letters is not defined right so python will throw name error when it sees that uh, this particular variable name or variable is not available uh, in the global python environment right so uh, so there are different set of uh, uh, different types of variables so one which we talked about so variables such as words in sentence or list of letters so they are called local variables and they are only uh, defined within the scope of this function so they are not available outside as in uh, if we if i write this particular variable name so python has no way to figure out yeah if this variable actually exists in the global environment okay so uh, that's the thing so i hope you understand this particular bit okay so this is really important and of course you can do a lot of uh, things on top of this so okay <clears throat> okay so this one more thing which we can do uh, and uh, so let's say i i'll just print 
the list of letters i will not return it okay so i will not return it okay so i'll just print the list of letters and i'll just co comment out the return part okay so this was the question asked by sumanta right so what happens if we don't use the return keyword so what will happen in this case so i want you guys to just make a guess okay because i've already told you so let me just share the padlet with you guys and so that you can answer uh just hang on for a second okay so now you can go ahead and open this padlet and write your answer so what will happen so i i'm writing this function so uh, let's say if i execute this particular piece of code which is this right so what will happen uh, what will be the value stored in heisenberg letters so i just want to know from you guys okay so what will happen so the question is pretty straightforward so here i'm not returning anything but i'm just printing the list of letters so what what will happen if i just execute this particular piece of code what will be there in your heisenberg letters okay so nothing nothing will be returned no output no variable nothing none will be returned but print okay uh, okay so i'm not seeing everyone's answer here so i can in fact point out some people i know so okay so nothing will be printed the list of letters will be printed so this is what uh, prashant is saying okay so okay so no okay sanchita is still writing no output satya is also of the same opinion that nothing will be printed list is printed rohan is saying and you guys can also vote if you think that yeah some answers uh, are actually uh, good so i think you can also vote uh, okay so okay so return none okay so that's fine okay so let's see uh, what will happen so let's go ahead and ex execute this okay and uh, so first of all uh, yeah let's not store this in a variable let's just first plain uh, execute this function call this function so yeah it just prints this particular thing okay but uh, okay i just want to make a dif uh, difference here so i i just commented out the print part i have uh, uncommented the return part okay so now if i execute this okay so this is the output it gives okay because it's returning so eventually you'll think that yeah this is going giving me the same set of things okay but the difference will become pretty clear so now i have commented the return part and now what i'm going to do okay so i'll store this in heisenberg letters okay okay so now as you can see that uh, i stored this but in nonetheless yeah this got printed right so because this is what i have instructed this uh, function to do so whenever this function call is made it will anyway execute this print command and whenever this print command is uh, given right so it will eventually print that particular thing okay so let's see what heisenberg letters has right so it contains nothing right as you can see it contains nothing okay so there is no uh, value which is assigned to this particular variable heisenberg letters okay because we are not returning anything right so this is essentially whatever there should be uh, what we are returning in the function right but because we are not returning anything so that's why there will be not, no none stored in heisenberg letters okay so uh, does it is it clear uh, can you guys please confirm if this particular concept is clear okay so it contains nothing okay so as you can see um, let's say let's call this even list or right so let's find the type of this right so this is of none type okay right so nothing is stored uh, none is stored in this uh, heisenberg letters okay okay so that's great so you guys are able to yeah, follow me uh, up till this point of time right so so you can choose to return something in a function you can also choose not to return so that of course depends upon the use case so for example let's say i want to use this list of first letters somewhere uh, down 
the line right so i want to use this particular uh, output somewhere in different piece of code right so we do eventually want this function to return that piece of thing right so that's why return statement is really important if you want to move the uh, uh, play around with those outputs and uh, put uh, pass them as inputs to other uh, set of codes okay so it might happen that this particular output uh, can go as an input to a different function altogether right so that can be possible right so that's why uh, we need to understand the difference between simply printing whatever we are want to return or uh, and the uh, and using this keyword return and then returning whatever we want to return right so this difference should be clear uh, the difference between print and the return thing okay so i hope yeah you guys are able to make sense of this all right so let's move ahead and uh, have a look at uh, another different example okay so of course uh, now what we can do because we have written a function so we can provide any specific sentence what we want to and then we can apply this particular function and that will make our life easier okay so let's run this function so whenever you are making changes to this so you need to run this particular piece of code right so that's how the function the functionality of a function will get changed right so you need to run that piece of code okay so now this is another input uh, sentence so this is uh, what i'm storing in star wars code and this reads as may the force be with you okay now what i'm doing i am storing the uh, function output so i'm making the call uh, call to this function here right so extract first letters and then i'll provide the input uh, here which is nothing but star wars code and store that in a variable i'm calling as first let us star wars so let's go ahead and yeah, execute this okay so now this function uh, will work for any sort of sentence you give that function as input right so we do, didn't have to uh, write this piece of code uh, let, let me just show you right so you didn't have to write this piece of code every time uh, you provide a specific uh, input sentence right so Uh, it's a cumbersome process but once we have a function for this so uh, this can take any such input sentence and perform the corresponding action okay and result the output okay so uh, yeah rohan is asking can we return multiple values so yeah we'll come back to that uh, specific example of functions so one thing to notice here that uh, a particular uh, okay let me just yeah so a particular function can have no inputs it can have one input it can have two inputs it can have more than two inputs similarly a function can return nothing okay so you cannot you might not you might choose to not even include the return function right so that's fine depends upon the use case you can return one output you can return multiple outputs as well okay so these things will become clear okay so a function is essentially a generic piece of uh, code right where you can provide a specific input and you can get the specific output right so that depends upon the construct of your function how many inputs you are dealing with how many inputs are required right so in our specific case we only needed one input that was the sentence right so we didn't need anything else because our task was relatively easy our task was to get the first letter of each word in those sentence right so that was our task and this particular function uh, does that task for any input sentence right so this is the uh, importance of writing function so if i have another input so i can write another sentence here and just execute this piece of code and uh, it will uh, show me the corresponding output okay so that's why the functions are a very reliable and very generic uh, construction python okay so now let's uh, look at a different uh, function so let's take an example of a function which, which returns the factorial of a number okay and uh, so in mathematics the factorial of a positive integer n is de denoted by n factorial and it, it is equivalent to the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n okay so for example if you have 5 factorial so that means this is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 okay so this is how a factorial is defined and in fact uh, 
we can also write this as 5 into 4 factorial okay so this is a useful formula so n factorial is equal to n into n minus 1 factorial right something like this okay so i hope you guys are aware of this if you're not aware that's totally fine but yeah just uh, understand what's the definition of a factorial is right so 5 factorial is nothing but the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n okay so okay so let's see how we can write a function for this okay so so here again i'm starting with the def keyword and then i have the name of this function which is factorial again this uh, function name is quite relevant in this case because this function is uh, outputting nothing but the factorial of a given number and what is the and how many inputs this function will have because we want to just find the factorial of a given number right so this function will take only one input right so this is pretty straightforward and if you think logically this makes sense right because we just need to find the factorial of a number so we don't even need any other input uh, we just need that particular number whose factorial we want to calculate okay then i have the doc string for this okay so this doc string essentially says function for calculating factorial of a number okay so always make sure that you are writing doc string whenever you are writing a function because so this increases the code readability by a lot okay now you also need to add a lot of uh, comments uh, pertaining to different sections of your code so here um, what what is the approach we are going to take to calculate the factorial so first of all what we will do uh, if uh, because this uh, number is provided as an input and if this number is less than 0 because if factorial is not defined for a negative number so what we'll do so we'll write a if statement first so if num is less than 0 right so this num is the input from here is the same name right so if num less than 0 then colon and then print factorial is not defined for negative numbers right so in this particular case i want to handle my code so if the given input is negative i will just print yeah factorial is not defined for negative numbers and this will force the user to input the appropriate input okay the next step is to write the elif part to calculate the factorial and uh, this is uh, really important okay so <coughs> sorry. right so in, in the elif part what you need to do you need to check if the given input is greater than zero okay so what in that case what you do you create a variable which in this case i'm calling as result and initialize that to one okay so initially I am assigning this value 1 to this uh, variable result. Okay. Now, what I want to do, so I'll be running a for loop within this LF uh, statement. Okay. So, this is my for loop. So, for i in range 1, comma, num plus 1, result equals result multiplied by i. Okay. So, in the first iteration, i takes the value 1 and result is also 1 in the first iteration. So, this result will be taking the value 1 into 1. That is 1 okay now if you go to the second iteration where i takes the value 2 now the result has been updated to 2 so it will take the value right so uh, result 1 into 2 right so i takes the value 2 now now this result will take the value 2 right because this result is coming from the previous uh, information so that was 1 earlier and i is 2 now so 1 into 2 is 2 so now the value of result is 2 at the end of second iteration so now if you move to third iteration so i will take the value 3 then what this will be so result is 2 from the last iteration then multiplied by 3 so it will be 6 so 6 will be assigned to this variable result okay so in this way uh, we'll try to calculate the factorial of a given number okay and uh, and then step 3 uh, i have written a else statement where uh, let's say if you pass the input as 0 so because that is a very specific use case so here we have considered less than zero greater than zero but of course zero factorial is also defined as one so you can handle that in the else part and you can simply print the factorial of zero is one okay so and then what you want to do because you want to return the factorial of the number which is stored in result so you'll be returning the result right so please make sure you're able to understand all the indentation properly okay so whatever is mentioned here so i hope you are able to understand how 
all these indentation are working so as you can see if elif else and return they are indented along the same line right so they have a proper fixed indent and of course these are all defined within the scope of this function which is i'm calling as factorial okay so i'm just returning result here okay so let's go ahead and yeah run this function so now what i want to do uh, okay so firstly so let's not show this in variable just uh, simply call this uh, function in a vanilla way okay so i write the name of this function so how do you call this function you write the name of the function simply and then within the parenthesis you provide the input okay so in this case i want to calculate the factorial of 7 so let's go ahead and enter this right so the factorial of 7 is 5040 uh, factorial of 6 will be 720 right so factorial of 5 is 120 right so this works uh, in a better way okay now what we want to do uh, we can store this result uh, in another variable so let's call this fact 7 okay so maybe i can use a prop better variable in so factorial 7 okay and then equate this to factorial and because i have written 7 so i'll provide input 7 here and then this will be stored in factorial 7 by because we are returning the result here right so whatever the result we are returning that will get stored in this variable uh, factorial 7 for this specific input okay so let's print this factorial 7 right so this is 5040 okay so because we are returning so we can store the call of this function for a specific input and store that in a under variable and print that variable okay okay so now what i am doing i am writing a list comprehension where my objective is to return the corresponding factorial of these numbers in our list of numbers okay so how we can do that so firstly we'll write a variable name which we uh, where we'll store this list of factorials for those corresponding input numbers okay and then i write the list comprehension so this is already you know here the output expression is what uh, is really important uh, to understand from your perspective right so here the output expression is nothing but this function call for a input which is i'm calling as number and then i am writing the for part right so for number in list of numbers so what this will do for each number in our list of numbers it will calculate the factorial and add that to this factorial list okay so let's go ahead and yeah run this okay so as you can see so these are the corresponding factorials right so the three factorial is 6 5 factorial is 120 four factorial is 24 six factorial is 720 and then of course for 8 and 12 also you have these numbers okay so in this case so in this way we can use our function elsewhere right so i wanted to calculate the factorials of let's say 1000 numbers right so i can write this simple list comprehension so it will uh, store the corresponding uh, factorial of all those 1000 numbers and store them in a list and uh, yeah our job is done right so writing a function makes our life a lot easier if you think in a way right so because we don't have to write this piece of code right so so if you think from a if you were to write this fun, uh, piece of code without using a function so what you would do you will write this this particular statement right and this num can be taken as input from a user okay but every time you have a, a input right so you will need to run this piece of code again and uh, it will give you the proper result but when we include this piece of code and define that within a function so it makes it more elegant and it makes uh, that piece of code a lot generic and uh, ubiquitous across the python environment okay so here we can call uh, make a function call here and store the corresponding output right so imagine this list had millions of numbers right so you would want to uh, write that piece of code every time so what you need to do you need to yeah just make a call to this function and include that in your list comprehension in this particular way okay so i hope you guys are able to follow what i have uh, taught till now so can you please confirm over zoom chat uh, if this makes sense right so rajat is asking how is recursive function uh, <clears throat> different from normal function so yeah i'll just uh, 
maybe uh, that is part of your assignment uh, but uh, i'll try to have a discussion on this uh, towards the end okay so now <clears throat> let's let's take another example of a function in which our objective is slightly different right so let's write a function in which uh, this function will take date as a string input and it will print the corresponding quarter as output okay so the example is uh, so let's say you have this particular date so 2018 okay so uh, in a year we can uh, we can divide a year into four quarters right so first jan first jan to let's say 31st march okay so this can be q1 or what we can call is quarter one then we can have let's say first april first april to may and june so 30th june right so that can be your quarter two and then similarly you can have let's say first july right so this will be q2 and then <clears throat> you can have let's say first july to uh, august september so 30th september q3 and then for the remaining year that is uh, 1st october to 31st december that will be q4 okay so we can divide a year into these four quarters and suppose you are given a specific date so you need to do some transformation on that date and print the corresponding quarter so this is our objective uh, while writing this particular piece of function right so <clears throat> so here one you should uh, get a few things clear because we have not learned about daytime objects and we have not learned about operations so here what we will do we will try to provide uh, uh, the date inputs as a string only right so we know how to work with strings and because these formats will be more or less consistent as in we will try to ensure so uh, we can provide that particular string input which will be nothing but a date and this function will uh, do some transformation on that string and print the corresponding quarter okay so this is the piece of code uh, which you need to write so again you start writing this function by writing this keyword def uh, okay then you'll add space and then you write the name of the function right so this is assign quarter and i think this is again a relevant function name right because here our task is to assign a quarter for a specific user date okay so and the input for this function is uh, just one single input that is the user date right so we don't need multiple inputs so there will be just one input date and this function will try to process that input and uh, print the corresponding uh, quarter okay okay so here one thing is important so our objective is prints the quarter as output right so we don't even need to return it so let's try to do both of them where we just want to print the quarter and we'll see an example where we want to return this quarter as well so that this information can be available uh, to any other extra piece of code where we can use this particular piece of information okay so i hope yeah that makes sense okay so so here again i am writing this doc string so this doc string tells that uh, this function prints the quarter for a given date string okay so again now i am following a proper uh, coding pr uh, protocols right so i am adding a proper comments here so what is the first step so step 1 is extract the year and month from the input date string right so why do we need to do this why do we need to extract the year and month from the input date string because that is how we are going to assess uh, uh, whether a particular input uh, uh, belongs to which quarter right so here of course you can argue that uh, we can simply we don't even need the year but we can only uh, use the month information to assign the corresponding quarter right but here let's say if i want the output as 2020 q3 right so this is this makes more sense when you talk about outputting quarter for a corresponding date right so uh, let's say if i give you an input so imagine these two inputs right so 2018 and then again the same set of uh, date for 2019 right so here for both of them 
if we just use the month it will give us yeah this is quarter three but we want to have um, a lot of uh, generality in it so our corresponding output for this will be 2019 q3 okay so this is the output will going to the spread okay and similarly for this the output we want to have is q3 okay so <clears throat> this is what we want to achieve so that's why we're taking both year and month okay because this will both be used uh, to return or print this particular output right so here firstly what i'm doing so in the user date uh, year will be extracted as the first four elements because uh, in this case i'm specifying that our input uh, will be a string and the user will need to provide the uh, proper format of the string right so of course we can add a lot of if else conditions to ensure that we are providing the proper input so but our sample input can be like 2019 let's say 0901 okay so this is our input and so how do you extract the year so this let's say this is a string this is a string so we need to extract the first four uh, characters which will be nothing but the year okay so this is a uh, this is a slicing method which we can uh, perform on this particular user date string okay then we have the date month so here also we know that uh, your month is coming from the sixth and the seventh character okay so we can write the corresponding uh, slice operation for that user date string okay So Priyanshi is saying that can we bo use both print and return? Yes, we can do that. In fact, I'll show you for this particular example. Okay. So if you write print statement and you also write return statement. So in that case, whatever you have mentioned in the print statement, that will eventually be printed whenever you make a call to that function. Okay. But the return thing will ensure that whatever uh, call to your function you are making. And if you're in, uh, storing that call or the output of that function to another variable so that variable will have some set of value with it which will be nothing but the function output okay so so in this case uh, we are storing the uh, year and month in this particular format okay so the first four characters uh, will be treated as the year and then the sixth and the seventh ca seventh character will be considered as the uh, month okay So, okay, so let's move ahead and see uh, what we can do. So now I'm writing a bunch of if, elif, and else statements. Uh, there will try to incorporate uh, or store our particular output, right? So let's look at the first statement, which is a if statement. So let's look at this particular function. So if this date month is greater than or equal to 01, okay and less than equal to zero three then our quarter will be so quarter is the variable which we're defining within this function okay so now this quarter will assign this quarter a value what so value of this so date year which is coming from here right which is coming from here and then we'll add uh, hyphen q1 okay so this is in the simple if part then in the lf part what we can do uh, we can write date month greater than equal to 04 and less than 06 less than equal to 06 so this will be uh, nothing but uh, we will be returning uh, or assigning the value date year plus q2 in quarter okay then again we have another elif statement where we are checking that if the date month is greater than equal to 7 and uh, uh, date month is less than equal to 09 so our quarter will be date year plus this particular q3 okay so you can see that we are, we only need month to assess either it's a q1 or q2 or q3 or q4 but of course because we want to print in a or print the output in a particular fashion that is 2019 q3 so that's why we needed this date here so that we can append it whenever we are storing that value in quarter okay and then finally in the else part so we'll store a q4 okay and then finally what we can do so here I'm not returning the quarter, but I'm uh, printing. So the corresponding quarter for the date. And then in the curly braces here, I have provided user date, which is passed as an input here. Okay. And then I'll just print quarter. 
okay which is calculated from here depending upon uh, which block it, it this particular input lands into right so it can land into this if part or the this particular elif part or this one or in the else part right so that of course depends upon the input that's why we have written the, these if else if elif and else constructs so let's go ahead and uh, execute this function okay so now what we'll do okay so so simply so we'll take a sample date as an input okay and then we can call our function so assign quarter and if we can hover over this so it shows the our doc string right so this function prints the quarter for a given date string okay and, and because this function takes only one input which is the uh, user date string so this is the string which we can pass okay so sample date and let's see what this outputs so the corresponding quarter for the date this is 2020 q3 okay so we can experiment with this so maybe let's say 4 and we can add let's say 20 so this will be the corresponding quarter for the date 2020 uh, 2020 420 is 2020 q2 right so this date belongs to uh, second quarter of 2020 okay so here as you can see uh, we are not returning anything because this is commented we are just printing so it prints but uh, let's say let's try to run this okay so it so it prints nonetheless okay whenever we are making a call to this function it prints it but if you just explore date quarter right so as you can see here when i use the print statement with date quarter it returns none right because in our function we are not returning anything so th th that's why no value will be assigned to date quarter okay so it will be a variable of none type okay so i hope that makes sense so now what we can do we can get rid of let's say print statement but use the return part okay so let's return the quarter run this function again and now we can use this okay so this will just print the corresponding quarter okay so or of course you can store this particular string you can store this particular string in another variable and return that that as an output yeah so in that case your output will, will nothing be but another string okay so you have those set of flexibility with you okay okay so uh, so guys are you able to uh, relate to this particular function which is assigned quarter so can you make sense of this yeah so this is again a very simple example so could we use x less than date month or uh, less than y okay so of course uh, the set of constructs can be different for you but in this case because you are taking a user date string so these bunch of if elif and else statements they seem fine to tackle the, the, this problem but of course you can follow a, any other approach to come to the same result okay so you can use something else and yeah that should be fine okay but the idea is this okay so now let me tell you one important thing okay so okay that example must be down here okay so i think it should be down here okay so let's see what i'm talking about okay so here up till now we have just provided the input but also there can be situations where we can provide a default input uh, there only right so let's say i provide the default input uh, this as uh, 2018 0320 okay so this is the default input and let's say let's see uh, what this means okay so earlier we we're just writing user date and doing operations here but we can provide some default input too okay so what this implies i'll tell you here okay so let's say uh, i'll not make changes here okay so let's say i just call my function i don't specify any input okay i don't specify any input but still it says uh, yeah prints 2018 q1 okay because in case you don't specify any input uh, and we have already provided a default input value so this will 
uh, take that default input in case we are not providing any input and print the corresponding quarter okay so let's take an example so let's see if you don't specify this what will happen if you just write this okay right so it says that type error so assign quarter missing one required positional argument user date right so here in this function i have not specified any default value this input will take and here i am calling this function without specifying the input so def, uh, that's why this is throwing this error that it's missing one required positional argument and in this case i would need to specify my input argument and this should work there okay so now it works right so uh, sample date was this particular value here and that's why yeah it's printing this so if you provide a default input it could be anything so let's say uh, 2021 uh, 029 or 10 okay so today's date maybe so that is a default input okay so in case you don't specify of course if you specify this input uh, sample date so this will print 2020 q3 but in case let's say if you don't provide any input so this will uh, take the default input so and this prints you the corresponding quarter which is 2021 q1 okay so in case you don't provide any input and you have provided the default value this argument is going to take okay so this should work in, in this manner right but if you don't specify any default value so what will happen if you just call this function this way so it will throw an error and will say that yeah one argument is missing because that argument was defined while creating this function okay so guys do you understand the concept of a default value of a function argument and how that works okay so i think yeah you should be able to understand how the default value of a function argument works okay so that's great to know all right okay so this is what i wanted to highlight now let's look at a different function in which we can have multiple return statements okay so this is a function in which i want to check even or odd okay so i'll provide an input to my function and this function will check whether this number is even or odd and then it will uh, show me the corresponding output okay so again i am starting this function with the def keyword i am writing the relevant function name and then i provided the input i am not specifying any default value but that's a good thing to have let's say in case whenever you are making a call to a function and you forgot to specify the input so that piece of code will not throw any error but it will take the default value which you have already provided as input and then show the corresponding output right so that in that way you can handle uh, such errors in this fashion okay so next i am writing the doc string which is again a very good practice whenever you're writing so this function checks whether a number is odd or even and then returns the corresponding string okay and then what i can do let's uh, basically uh, uh, comment this particular piece of line so first step is we want to check if the number is even if it is uh, even then we'll return even string okay so we'll do an if check if num if this num modulo 2 is equal to equal to 0 so if this condition is true then this piece of code will be executed and in this what we are saying return even okay so we are saying return even then but in the else part uh, uh, we can return odd okay so i have not written the else part but it's essentially the same thing because uh, you can have different return statements but you will only be returning one thing at once okay so uh, this is important maybe I, I should write the else part just for more cl clarity i can press tab to come to the proper indentation okay so let's write this function okay so now uh, <clears throat> so what i'll do okay so let's not bother about this so i'm calling this function so writing check even or odd and then providing 10 as input okay so let's see what output does it give so it returns even let's put 11 so what does it uh, output so odd okay so let's go back to our original okay so what we'll do we'll create a variable which i'm calling as is even or odd okay and then i'll assign to this this particular output 
from this function right so this is function and the input you will be providing here and uh, will store the output of this so what is the output of this function it, it's uh, nothing but it's outputting a string right so a string even or odd depending upon whether the number is even and odd okay and store this is in this in uh, another variable which i'm calling as even odd and i can print this too okay so let's go ahead and print this okay so as you can see is even odd is even now okay 11 is also odd okay so i hope you are you are able to understand the multiple return statements right so in this case so we can have multiple return statements let's say if you have uh, different if uh, else part etc okay so here in the above example too what we could have done so instead of writing quarter here so here also we could have written return this then here also we could have uh, written return this so we could have multiple return statements but only one return statement will be executed depending upon uh, which condition uh, is getting satisfied okay so yeah all right so can you please confirm if uh, the multiple return statements uh, make sense to you guys right so this is again straightforward thing okay so all right okay so moving ahead okay so let's uh, look at another function so now now let's write a function which returns multiple variables at once okay one thing you need to understand uh, that your function can have any input right so this input can be a single number it can be a string it can be a list it can be a dictionary it can be a tuple or it can be a set it can be any such a data structure or any such object okay so we can provide those inputs and depending upon the function use case you can return the corresponding output okay so now uh, what we need to do uh, so this is our task now so we want to write a function which returns multiple variables at once okay so in this example uh, we are given a list of uh, numbers as input and we have to return the mean and median of this list of numbers okay and i think you have already done this exercise in your ex uh, assignments right so if you are given a list you can calculate the mean of that list or the median okay so you can do that okay so you have already done this uh, particular exercise in your assignments so it will be very easy for you to follow so i am creating this list of numbers which is again the heights of uh, let's say six people in centi uh, in centimeters okay so one person has a height of 172 centimeter another has 175 centimeter like that okay so this is a list of height of uh, people in centimeters okay so now i need to write a function which will return both mean and median at once okay so when i uh, call this function whatever that function name is whenever you call that function so it will give me two values uh, one is mean another is median so up till now we have been only looking at those functions which return only a single variable right so earlier right so this even this function so it was returning quarters so this is a single variable only right so we are not uh, returning multiple variables at once okay so let's see how we can do uh, that in this particular example okay so here again i'm writing starting with a def keyword okay and then i'm writing the function name so because what we want to do we want to return the mean and median of this function uh, of this list of numbers right so i'm calling this function as calculate averages right so i think this is again a relevant function name because here we need to return both the uh, so measure of averages right so one is mean and another is median okay so i'm calling this function calculate averages and this function is again will take one output uh, input and that input will be the list of numbers right so in the in this example we have already created a uh, sample input which is called heights okay so uh, firstly so your input uh, can be of any uh, name right so but you need to be very consistent in using this particular input name inside your function right because your function uh, what will do in the run time uh, whatever input you provide so it assigns this variable that particular uh, input and then uh, 
yeah pass that within the scope of the function okay so here again i have written a doc string so this function calculates the mean and median of a given list of numbers okay so the first step is calculate the mean which is pretty straightforward so you sum all the numbers in your list and divide by your length of list right so this is your mean and i'm storing this in a variable which i'm calling as mean now we need to calculate the median this is relatively tricky so what we'll do we'll first sort our list of numbers okay and then we'll find the length of our list using the length function uh, i'll be going through this particular calculation of median quickly because uh, you have already done your assignments right so you have already done this in the list assignment so this should be already be familiar with you okay so now if the list has even numbers so it will the way of calculating median will be a bit different so for example let's say if you have a list of numbers as 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 okay so what you want to do you want to take the mean of these two numbers and that you will report as the median but in, in case where you have odd numbers of elements in your uh, list so you will be returning the middle element okay so this is the code which i have written in this case so if the number of elements uh, is even so your median will be calculated in this specific using the specific formula right so essentially we are taking the average of the uh, middle two elements okay in this piece of line else uh, that means if the number of elements in your list uh, is odd then we'll use this spe specific formula and we'll store that thing in the median variable only and in this case what we are doing we are returning two values one is median and the other is median okay so one is mean and the other is median and as you can see here if we want to return two uh, outputs uh, or two variables so it will write return then the name of the first variable which we want to return then provide comma and then the name of the other variable okay which is median in this case okay so in this way we you can return two variables at once okay so let's go ahead and execute this function okay now because we have already created the sample input which is heights so let's calculate the average uh, or find out the average find out the mean of uh, these heights and the median okay so i can call this function so write the function name and then the input which is heights right so this is the mean and this is the median okay and if you can hover on this function name you can see the doc string this function calculates the mean and median of a given list of numbers okay so in this case so as you can see i think you are aware about any such construct right so if we have two variables which are like 1 comma 2 or maybe let's say we have two list we are separated by uh, comma right so these this is nothing but a tuple only right because if we have two uh, values uh, separated by comma so that means it's a tuple okay so i hope you yeah, you remember that particular concept so when we return mean median so the output as you can see this is nothing but a tuple only okay so are you able to understand how this output is a tuple i think you already know this from the earlier classes but just want to Uh, know from you if you remember these things right so in in this case when we want to output multiple variables so we'll uh, separate them by comma in the return line only and uh, when we call this function so we'll be getting a tuple of those many numbers uh, which we which we are returning right so in this case we are returning only two variables right so we are getting the tuple with two elements okay now also what we can do we can because we are returning here so we can store this in another variable so first variable i am calling as mean height and then i am writing comma then i am writing median height and then i am assigning these two variables the corresponding values right so calculate averages heights so in this particular case so mean height will be assigned this particular value which is this and the median height will be assigned this particular value which is 171.4 okay so let's go ahead and run this okay and the mean height will be 175 and the median height will be 171 right or let's say if you store this in not in mean maybe i'll just write another piece of line so let's say average heights so i'm just storing this in one variable 
so you can already expect if this uh, variable is a tuple okay so this variable is again a tuple of two numbers right so because we are returning a tuple when we are making a call to this function and the tuple is getting stored here in average height but if you specify or write the output uh, or store the output in this fashion right so because this is returning a tuple of two elements and you provide two variables here right Spe uh, separated by comma so mean height will take the first uh, element of the tuple and the median height will take the second element of the tuple okay so yeah so guys uh, are you able to understand uh, how we can return multiple variables at once so i think this is again uh, okay so right so here we are what we are doing uh, we are dividing by uh, so let's say if you sort this particular list of numbers so this will be 168 170 170 and then you have 172 175 and then you have 200 right so when you calculate the mean so do sum all the numbers and divide by 6 okay so that number uh, might be some recurring decimal so uh, we can take care of that uh, okay so i'll tell you guys what the problem one of the students is facing that why the mean is taking these many decimal places but the average height is taking that okay so let's okay so this is our uh, list of numbers so when we calculate the mean so you'll write sum and then divide by 6 right so that can be uh, a recurring decimal sort of thing which we are seeing here right and this uh, again of course has been rounded okay so this is a recurring decimal thing but if you calculate the uh, median so because we have six numbers so median will nothing be 170 plus 172 by 2 right so this is precisely 171 and uh this this is stored as a float float type right right so because this is an exact number but of course we can control how many decimal places we want so we can use the round function etc so those things we can do okay so maybe uh, let's say i want to return the round of mean comma 2 right so this will round the mean and median to two decimal places so let's run, uh, yeah run this function and then you can calculate averages right so as you can see we can uh, we are getting the output till two decimal places only okay so is that uh, clear uh, i don't know who asked that question uh, but uh, okay so chitranjan asked that okay all right great so let's move ahead so i i hope yeah you guys are able to understand how we are uh, able to return multiple variables at once and these will be returned as tuples only so remember in the tuple class i told you that uh, we'll be using tuples when we want to return uh, something or let's say multiple variables at once so tuples will come in really handy for such sort of constructs okay so i hope yeah that makes sense okay so uh, in python if you have any two numbers separated by comma so that will be a tuple only right so that i have already covered okay so now uh, let's do a last problem and then we'll talk about the differences between functions and method and then we'll jump into the quiz okay so this is the sixth example so in this example we want to write a function which adds an element to a list okay so this function takes the list as an argument and the element to be added okay so i think you already know this from uh, the list class so when we talked about different methods right so we have heights uh, list here right so you already know uh, how to do this task so can you tell me what is the method uh, okay so just let me clear this uh, padlet and then you can answer so can you tell me so is there any method which uh, adds an element to a list okay okay and uh, what is the argument uh, so can you write the proper statement when we are using the append method so let's assume that you uh, have a variable called list1 
and you want to add an element which we can call as lm okay so can you tell me yeah so sanjita is writing list dot append item okay uh, or lm right uh, priyansh is uh, also writing okay so list one dot append so you already know this particular thing so and these methods are inbuilt as in whenever you create a list variable okay so these methods are already available to you right so when i write dot and then this will show me a bunch of methods of associated with this list object right so append clear copy count extend index okay so in this particular example or in this particular function what we want to do we want to replicate the functionality of the append method which you have guys mentioned over in this padlet right so we want to write a custom function which will essentially replicate the functionalities of the append method or just mimic it okay so we want to write that particular function so it will be going, it is going to be very easy task for us okay so let's see how we can do that okay so because this function uh, is supposed to add an element to a list so we definitely need to provide an uh, two arguments to this function one is the list in which we want to add the element and the second will be the element itself which we want to add to this list okay so what we will do we will again start with the def keyword and i'm writing the name of this function is list append which is again a very relevant uh, function name for our task and this function has two inputs one is of course your list right which you can call list one list two or even in this case i'm calling my list and then the second argument which will be uh, separated by comma second argument is the element which you want to add to the list and let's talk about the doc string so doc string is not here it reads this function appends an element to the list okay so the first step is what we want to do so i'm creating a variable new list and then i'm storing in this my list plus lm okay which is in square brackets right so you learned about how we can concatenate two list okay so there we didn't need any special method or anything as such so we can take two list and add them together using the plus symbol and that element will be added to your list and then we can return this new list okay so it's a very simple function and in fact uh, you can uh, do you can write a very uh, simpler uh, statement as well okay so what you can do you can simply wait a bit yeah so you don't even need to create this new list okay so let's yeah so what you can do that here you can simply return my list plus lm so that will again be a list okay but uh, to keep things consistent so i'll just uh, storing this information which is my list plus lm that is a new list uh, and storing this in variable and returning this particular new list okay so let's run this piece of code so now i have defined my function so now as you can see a hides is nothing but this particular uh, list which we have from above so now let's call this function list append okay and so as you can see if you hover on this function so list append and this shows the doc string this function appends an element to the list okay now this function will take two arguments right so one is the list itself and second is the element which you want to add okay so so here i have provided the list which we have already available from us that is called heights and this is the element which i want to add to this list so let's go ahead and uh, run this function okay so now as you can see this uh, give, returns this updated list but does it actually change our original uh, heights uh, variable uh, just yeah let me ask you guys so if we written this function so if i have written, uh, yeah just called this function so will it change uh, our original heights okay can you tell me so pratik is saying no chitranjan is saying no yeah so will it change our heights okay so some is someone is saying yes okay okay so let's see if that works so here we have already appended right so just call this function now let's print heights okay so now we are not seeing any uh, element 190 added to this right so just calling this function won't change your uh, won't change your original list okay but if we add uh, wrote the append method so this will definitely change our heights okay so let's try to do that okay and see the difference between uh, 
those things. So I'll write heights dot append, and then I'll try to add 190. Okay, so this will run, and now I can print heights. Okay, so now as you can see, that 190 has been added to our heights. Okay, so it's very important to differentiate between the functions and methods. Of course, we could have made the same change to our function using this function where what we could have done so let's print our heights once again because this object is mutable and we need to keep track of what elements it has right so it has 190 so let's uh, assign the output of this function to our original variable heights only and the element which we want to add let's say uh, for a really tall guy so maybe uh, yeah so 210 okay so I don't think any human being exists with this um, 210 centimeters height, but let's assume that yeah, they are uh, yetis maybe. Yeah. So now I'm writing this piece of code. So where, what I'm doing, so I am assigning the output of this function, which is list append that we just wrote in the heights itself. Now let's print heights. So as you can see, so 210 has now been added. Okay. so. If you want to make ch changes use in your original object using a function, so you'll need to uh, write something similar to this, right? So you cannot simply just call the function, which is just this particular bit. If you just call this, it will show you the corresponding output, but it will not change your in original uh, object, okay? But the methods associated with these objects have the power to do so. And especially we're dealing with uh, list objects which are mutable. So there are a lot of different methods as associated with the list object. And if once if you apply those methods, it will change our list. Okay. So, so here also, uh, instead of just writing uh, 190, we can also write the name of our uh, input, uh, which is LM. So LM is equal to 40. Okay. So you can also mention that and that will be added. Okay. So yeah, so I'm making a function call here. So 40 has been added, right? So you can choose to just write 40 or just write LM, okay? Or maybe if you want to handle some cases, so you'd want to specify uh, this particular default value of the LM you, which you want to add, maybe let's say 30, or you also want to have a default uh, list. So maybe let's say an empty list, something like that, okay? So you can have all those things. So you can, of course, experiment this in your free time and you will be able to understand how this works, okay? So from this particular example, we come to this very important point uh, that there is a stark difference between a function and a method, right? So they might lo look very similar as they perform in an almost similar way, but the key difference is the concept of class and its object, okay? So you will learn about this tomorrow, but uh, the thing is, uh, methods are special functions. I think you should remember this by heart. So methods are special functions uh, which can be applied on a specific object in Python, right? So uh, if you have a list object, so there are certain methods which are essentially functions, but they're only defined for a list object only, like append method or maybe extend method or pop method, remove method. So there are certain methods which are essentially functions but they have been defined for a specific type of object only right but if you think about functions so they are generic uh, uh, pieces of code right so functions are more generic but methods are essentially uh, restricted functions or special functions meant for a specific python object okay so functions can be called only by its name as it defined defined independently but methods cannot be called by its name only Okay, so you cannot call a method just by writing append. Okay, so you need to provide the object. So for example, let's say now in our case, it was the object was heights, and then we can provide the method. Okay, so methods don't act independently. Okay, so you need to provide the object on which that method has been defined for. Okay, so, uh, all right, so, you learn tomorrow that yeah methods are these special functions which are defined within a class so the concept of class will become really important tomorrow and in fact most of the objects which you will be encountering in your future uh, classes maybe let's say in machine learning 
where you are importing some module or uh, uh, functionalities right so a lot of objects will be a class and then those classes will have uh, various methods associated with them okay so these things will become clear and you need to have an understanding of what are methods what are classes what are objects what are attributes so these all things will become uh, clear in tomorrow's class right but for now i hope you are um, you understand what is the basic difference between a function and method right so you have to very carefully use these terms even when you are talking to anyone right so it's uh, best to stick to proper technical jargon or terminology right so uh, you cannot you should not call len as a method right so len is not a method but it is a function right and because that function uh, uh, can take a, a string as an input or a list as an input so those things okay so rajat is saying that what will happen if you have used append method in the function then also there won't be change in the list so there will be so uh, whenever you are applying any method so maybe we can take an example for that to demonstrate what rajat is trying to ask so so see append method already exist uh, 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 understand what our objective in this case is we want to write a function which replicates or mimics the uh, functionality of the append method so that's why of course will not use the append method but maybe let's say you're writing another function and in that case uh, if you're writing a function and if you need to use any inbuilt list method so you can use those but you need to be very cautious that because once you apply those list methods uh, your list object can get changed okay so you need to be very cautious when you are using the methods associated with your list objects okay and <clears throat> so i hope you guys understand the difference between let's say hides or append okay 50 so this will add an element 50 to your uh, list hides and the size of the list will increase by 1 okay but you should avoid writing statements such as hides is equal to hides or append okay because if you just write this this will induce and change in the list only right because list objects are mutable and any such method as a as append they will induce a change in your list right so you don't even yeah write you don't have to write like this okay so this is a very very bad practice in a way okay so you need to understand uh, the difference between methods and how they change your list objects and uh, correspondingly you need to work on them right so of course in the, uh, today's class we have discussed examples of a uh, list strings but of course we can have functions which act on a dictionary and do some transformations and give you something else what you want okay so those things are of course uh, there and you can uh, work on those specific set of input so you can write a specific function which takes a dictionary as an input and returns let's say uh, a the keys of that dictionary or maybe uh, a concatenated string of keys and values something like that right so you can imagine uh, millions of such use cases for any such specific input and you should be able to write functions for those right so uh, this is a really interesting uh, topic and i think the more you practice on different set of problems so we will be providing you a lot of problems to work on so of course there is today's assignment and then your self project as well you'll need to do you'll be need uh, required to write a lot of functions but also to build your coding practice so we'll be give, giving you additional set of questions which you can work on and especially on friday we'll be having a coding uh, marathon okay so over the course of two hours on friday uh, we'll be giving you two three questions and you need to yeah solve them and submit your proper uh, collab notebooks okay <laughs> So Sumanta so is asking inside the function we added two lists and also store with uh, with a parent list so it must be updated but why it didn't? Uh, sorry, I didn't get your question, Sumanta. So inside the function we added two lists and also store uh, with parent list so it must be updated but right so there is no uh, parent list. So, see the input was heights that is our input list okay. that list is not going to change if you just call the function okay 
because here if if i just try to print new list okay it will not be available outside because it is defined within the scope of the variable uh, function okay so see name error right so this name is not defined okay so what i was talking about this spe uh, specific input which is which we are providing right so input was hides in this case so when we call this function uh, list append so when we call this function so my list will take this hides as input uh, so this value will be assigned to this variable my list this will be passed within the function so whatever the uh, value is here it will add lm to it and store that in new list and we are returning new list okay but you can have you can of course do away with new list and just return this particular thing right so you don't even need to create a new variable so you can return this which will eventually be a list okay so you understand the point uh, okay so rohan is asking what's the way to use a global variable in a function okay so i have omitted this particular part uh, for today i didn't want you to confuse uh, yeah i don't want you guys to get confused uh, most probably will be discussing this in the guided project okay so in the guided project we have a very interesting problem statement in which you will need to find the intersection of some lists okay so there uh, uh, shivam shivam will walk you through the concept of uh, how we can define a global variable in a function but you can use the global keyword okay so you can read about this but of course this will be covered in the guided project okay uh, it was there in the, in the assign in the material for the last batch but uh, i thought yeah it's better to omit that particular thing so that because the outcome of this particular lecture is you need to understand how you can write simple functions and then of course we can build on to that idea how we can add a lot of in integers right so how can we make uh, a variable which is defined within the scope of the function how can we make that variable accessible to the global environment or how and of course any such variable which is present globally that will be available in your function okay so let me just give you an example so this is a really interesting question so let's say i'm not adding lm so maybe i don't uh, need this okay so i'm just uh, using one uh, list as input and the lm i'll define as heights only okay so let's see how this works so i'll just return new list in this case okay okay so this heights function or the python already knows that heights exist okay so let's go ahead and provide the input heights okay so what it will do it will add the two list which are heights and heights right so it will just add these two things and as you can see right so this list has now yeah so 170 till 210 right so this is now repeated okay so this variable which was defined globally and i can access this variable by just writing heights and if it uh, does not throw any error this it contains any value so this means this particular variable is available globally so i can use it anywhere so i can use heights within a function so so whenever i am calling this function so this heights will be whatever that is defined outside okay but of course we can do a lot of inter uh, operations so as we can restrict the scope of a variable within a function so those sort of set of things will be discussed uh, in a guided project but uh, for you you need to understand that uh, if you think about the simple use case so this heights is available within a function but this new list is not available outside the function okay so whatever variable i have defined outside that is accessible within inside the function but whatever variable i have defined inside the function that is not accessible outside or, or accessible globally okay so that what i mean by uh, accessible globally so if i write new list here right so it does not uh, have any value right so it's not defined outside right so python will throw an error right so this is not defined this is only defined within the scope of function okay so i hope you understand this and uh, yeah will be talking about how you can increase the scope of a local variable in a function to make it available globally so that we'll discuss uh, later on so i thought it's better to omit that particular thing uh, so that you don't get carried away but you uh, stick to the basic understanding of how to write a function 
appreciate the difference between a function and a method okay so they are of course python is in fact an ocean of uh, things right because it has such varied functionality this can be used uh, in a lot of different use cases and therefore there are different constructs for different set of activities and uh, uh, yeah so we'll be learning how to use functions uh, well uh, will be our objective would be how to write better functions right how to be very smart at writing functions to do a specific task okay so there are few things you need to keep in mind you need to write a proper relevant uh, function name you need to provide a uh, you need to think of what set of inputs should go into this uh, particular uh, function this one thing which i didn't uh, mention you guys right so let's say if i provide two inputs but i don't use this input uh, anywhere okay so maybe uh, let's say lm one and then i'll add another uh, argument lm2 okay but here i'll just add lm1 i'll not be using lm2 within this function okay so let's see so now if i call this function list append on height and of course i just spe specify lm1 so let's say that lm1 is uh, maybe let's say 185 okay so what this will do so this will throw an error that saying that missing one required positional argument lm2 right because i have not specified here and i am not even using that so maybe let's say if i specify lm2 is equal to let's say uh, 160 okay so of course this is not being used but it handles right this is not being used so essentially you can say that this particular input is redundant right so it's up to you how you need to uh, construct your functions and see what all inputs that function requires right and you should provide only that number of inputs right so you should not have any such extra input uh, which is not being used at all in the inside the function right so you need to understand this particular bit okay so